Welcome to the Earning Freedom Program. I am here with my good friend, Erica, and we have been working together for the past couple of weeks, I guess, maybe as long as a month, getting her ready for some challenging times ahead. Erica, why don't you tell me a little bit about how you found who I am and how I help people? Well, uh, one day I just started Googling in the computer uh, good books to read while going to prison. So that's how I stumbled upon your book. And I placed an order, and I wasn't sure if I had put in the right mailing address, so I contacted you. And, uh, and then you replied, and that's how we started talking. So, yeah. so you're right. You were, you were looking for books about going to prison. And tell our audience, who is somewhat new to the program or may not understand the program, why it is you would have been looking for books to help you understand prison. What was going on in your life that led you there? Well, I'm going to prison on January 5th, and uh, I'm going to be serving a two-year sentence for money laundering, and I had never been to prison before, so... But at the time that you wrote, you didn't know what was happening in your life. What was going on in your life at that time? What stage were you at in the proceedings? Oh, yes, sorry. When I first uh, contacted you, I didn't know if I was going to take the offer that the authorities were giving to me, which was uh, actually it was three years. And I, I could either do that or I could go to trial. Um, so that's what I was facing. I was very confused and I didn't know what decision to make. Um, I was feeling very scared and helpless. That's understandable. I think a lot of people who get charged with a criminal offense are feeling afraid and helpless and are looking for answers. The difference between you and those other people, Erica, is you took action. You decided to educate yourself and try and find what you could to learn about this very difficult process in your life. And that's what started our communication. You started by just wanting to buy a book. But as I recall, at that time in your life, Erica, you didn't know whether you were going to plead guilty, whether you were going to go to trial. You didn't know what the outcome was going to be. And when you were in that state without having any answers or any clarity, tell us a little bit about what was going on. How was it affecting your, your ability to relax, your ability to sleep, your anxiety? What was going on in your life? Well, I had a lot of anxiety. I was eating a lot. I was uh, having a hard time uh, just keeping a routine and um, not wanting to get excited about anything going on in my life out here because I didn't know if I was going to leave all this if I went to prison. And um, just very worried about my family, which... Uh, mm -hmm was, uh, yeah, it didn't let me sleep well at night. and uh, Sure. So it was very difficult. And, and what was the reason that authorities had targeted you for prosecution? Well, I, I used to have uh, businesses where I had slot machines and people would go there to gamble. And under Texas law, uh, you're allowed to have slot machines but when you pay out to the client, you're supposed to pay them out with teddy bears or with something that has a value of no greater than $5. You can actually pay them out in cash as well, but no more than $5. So if you pay them more in excess of that, then uh, you're committing illegal gambling. And <clears throat> I, was, uh, I had permits to have these businesses open out of Star County. I paid about over 200 grand in permits. So I never thought that I would actually get charged with money laundering by a different county, which is the county where I, I happen to live at, not the county where I was doing business. That county never charged me with anything. So I never so, thought so that what I was doing, you know, could land me in jail. I didn't uh, know that it, that it could be seen as a felony. Um, yeah. I think that you're in the same position, Erica, that a lot of people who, who, with whom I work are, they, they get involved in business, never really fully appreciating 
that there's a possibility that they could go to prison or that there's a possibility that a prosecutor could label them as a criminal and want to go after them. And so for that reason, it's very easy to be spinning out of control and wondering, what am I going to do with my life? The, the, the key point that I wanted our viewers to see is that although you were spinning out of control, you took action. You decided to do the best that you could possibly do to start preparing. And to do that, you reached out to find people who had gone through it before. And I'm so glad that I've had the opportunity to work with you. And we started off with, with not only getting you the book, but then we took some additional steps. Do you, can you help our audience under, uh, understand what we did that got you past that hurdle of spinning out of control and starting to take some control of your own life? What did we do? Well, we started having uh, coaching sessions where you would talk to me. Uh, the, the first thing that you did was you helped me write uh, the biography of, of my life. And uh, that got me in why, touch. Tell us, why we, tell us why we took that step, Erica. Why did we, do, why did we think it was important? What your understanding do you have of why it was so important to begin writing the biography of your life? I think that it was, well, for many reasons, but uh, the first reason was because we were going to use that uh, letter to be part of my file for the authorities, you know, for the judge, uh, for the court. So we felt like it was important for them to know who I was as, as a person and uh, to know my history, to know where I grew up, where I studied, who my parents were, who my family is and what bad decisions I made along the way that got me to uh, this point in my life. And You're right. I think it's really important to do that, Erica. It's really important for our viewers to recognize that part of the art of healing is recognizing first we've got to identify where we are in the this, in this situation, and we've also got to help other people identify or understand who we are as individuals. If we don't take those steps, it's always going to be the external influences and circumstances of our life that are going to define who we are. It's going to be the criminal charge. You know, when we just think of the term money laundering, we don't think of a beautiful young woman who somehow got involved in, in this situation and is now in trouble with the criminal justice system and is facing imprisonment. All we see is money laundering. But the reality is you're a human being and you've got a lot of history behind you. Pardon? I also got charged with organized crime, with organized crime and with money laundering. So it was those so, so those charges alone, they sound like, wow, that's a real criminal. But the reality is when you took the steps of writing your biography, we were able to help any reader. And that, as you said, includes not only the judge, but it includes the prosecutor. It includes the probation officer. It includes the future parole board. It includes your future, bus your future business associates. It's starting to sow the seed that will say, I am in this situation, but my life is much bigger than this. And I want you to look at me for everything that I have done and more importantly, see what I am doing to prepare for success. And by writing that, by telling me your story, what, what happened next? What did we do? Is it, how did that process, tell us how that process unfolded of us writing your biography. Well, it was very therapeutic for me because I started have, having all these memories of my childhood and how I grew up, and I guess I started to realize that I didn't just end up here by coincidence. It was a long process that started a long time ago. And that also helped me to realize that I wasn't just a victim of the system, you know, because before I was thinking, oh, poor me, I haven't done anything wrong, this is so unfair. And after we did the biography, I started owning up to what, you know, to my side of things and to what I had done wrong. And um, so that was very helpful and very enlightening. And um, it helped me uh, heal with my family as well. It made me realize how much I loved my family and uh, how bad I felt uh, about what I had done, how my decisions had impacted them. So it helped anybody who read the document understand your background. It helped them understand that you were incredibly remorseful for what had happened. 
Yes. It helped you express that there that that although you had been charged with this crime of money laundering and organized crime and and there were you know it was strictly a business decision just by violating the law itself created some victims of the system and all of that positioned you or maybe brought some clarity in your life to help you determine the best thing for me to do is plead guilty is that yeah. right yeah after I read that and after I read your book and I saw what you had gone through and what you had achieved, that inspired me to think that I could do something similar with my life and that I could overcome this challenge and turn it around to actually help me and to grow from it and for something good to come out at the end of the tunnel. So in the midst of all of this, they gave me a better offer. They went from three years uh, to two years, and that's when I, I accepted it. And I'm going in on January 5th for money laundering, actually. So it brought you this level of clarity that you can think more clearly, and maybe it gave you a little bit of confidence in helping you understand, okay, now I've hit this stage. I'm going to start rebuilding my life, and I'm going to start rebuilding my life because although I'm in struggle right now, I can overcome. And when we have been speaking through this process, Eric, I have been telling you, you're not alone. There are tens of millions of people in America who have had their lives spun out of control for some reason or another. For some of them, it may be in the criminal justice system. For others, it may be because they got divorced. It may be because they had a financial reversal. It may be because they've gained weight. It may be because they had a substance abuse issue. But the reality is, we can always move our way through these challenges and begin building a better life. But it all starts when we are ready, willing, and able to start saying, okay, I have hit the bottom, and now I'm going to start building a better life. And you have been a master of that, Erica, since we've started working together. You've really accepted where you are, and you started taking some very methodical, deliberate steps toward saying, okay, I've hit the bottom right now, and I want to invite the world to see what I'm going to do while I'm here, how I'm going to start building my ladder and becoming more successful and bringing happiness and joy into my life. And that's what we've been working on ever since then. So what was the next step that followed after we did the narrative and after you agreed to accept responsibility? What took place next? Well, uh, okay, just a little bit of background. One of the reasons that got me to this point is because I came here to Texas to kind of hide from the world. So I was, I was hiding from the life I used to have, from the friends I used to have. And um, I don't even have Facebook. I'm a very uh, closed in kind of person. And that I think that was one of the reasons that I also got into this business and that I'm, I'm going to prison that had something to do with it, definitely. And so you uh, suggested that I should um, do the show 24 to life, which is a 24 hours before someone goes to prison. And the show, help our, help our audience understand. What does that mean? You do the show. What happened? Well, I, I had to do a Skype interview and uh, talk a little bit about my life and about the- How did the Skype interview get started? I had to just join Skype and I was talking to one of the producers. Well, it all started through you. You were the one that introduced me to one of the producers. And it I- It started with a conversation. And yes. exactly what you're saying, you were, you were reluctant to come forward and come clean and say, this is who I am. And I said, no, this is the time for you to say, I've hit the bottom. I want to draw my line in the sand and start building a better life. And I asked you, how would you feel about going on television? That's how we started. You, I asked you, would you be willing to go on television? You're right. You were private and you were reluctant. But then you broke I free. Embarrassed. I was very embarrassed. Like millions of other people. But the difference is this. Instead of just curling up and being afraid and not taking action, you agree to say, okay, I am going to tell my story because there are a lot of people who face struggle, but you're going to be one of the people who overcome struggle. And you're going to do that 
by being open and transparent. And mm -hmm. so you did, now you went on, tell us, you, so I suggested that you go on this television show, 24 to Life. You did a Skype interview, and then what happened? Then, uh, like a week later, they, you know, they told the producers, other producers from the show got in touch with me, and so they said that they were going to come down and film me. And that's when I started to freak out, and I called you, and I said, Michael, I don't know if I, want to, if I can do this, because I'm very embarrassed, and I'm very private. And I like to hide from the world and from people. And I want to hide the crime I committed. I don't want to own it, so to speak. So, Had you done that, do you, had you continued to hide and be afraid, it would have been very hard for you to grow and to blossom yes. and to start building this new life. But then you did. And tell us a little bit about the experience. What was it like being filmed on television knowing that millions of people are going to have access to learning about your story. Tell us how that worked out. What was it like being filmed? Okay. Well, at the beginning, it was super scary. I'm not going to lie to you. I was really terrified. And, you know, I had to convince my family to get on board. And my sister Gina was on board right away. But the other members of my family were not enthusiastic about it. And uh, we didn't know what to expect. I mean, they don't really tell you what to say or what it's about. They just come down here and it's all improv. They tell you, for example, uh, you know, these are your last 24 hours. You're going to have breakfast with your mom. Uh, what would you tell her? And that's it. So it was very, very healing because I am normally a very repressed person. All my family is very repressed with our feelings and uh, with what we tell one another. So it kind of forced me to come out of my shell and to uh, say a lot of things to my family, to tell them I was sorry, to tell them I loved them. For example, one of my sisters, I had had a huge fight with her for months. And uh, it was really wonderful because we made up. And um, yeah, I, I love doing it. Well, that's what therapy is all about. It's about really coming clean. And the, the sooner that you can do that, not only with the judicial system, but with everybody else that is, that is influenced by this situation, the sooner we can start bringing clarity into our life and we can start building a path towards something more successful. And I know that that's what you and I have been doing ever since then. We've been talking about we want the world to see Erica not only at the worst moment of her life when she was first coming into the prison system, but we want to hear about what she's going to do while she is there because there's going to come a time on the other side of this journey mm -hmm. where Eric is not in trouble anymore, where she is strong and successful and back building, enjoying all the best things in life. And what we're trying to do with this program today is help people connect the dots, help people see that this didn't happen by accident. It's because Erica took very methodical, deliberate steps, beginning with reaching out and finding a book to read, following up by inter exposing herself and telling her story, following up by agreeing to be filmed on television, requiring that she is open and honest with the people she loves and the people who love her. And that opened her mind to start saying, okay, how am I going to get ready for the prison journey as well? And what have we been doing Erica, to get ready for that prison journey? Well, we, we've been talking, and uh, you told me that I needed to have a plan for when I go to prison so that I'm not just sitting there, you know, waiting for the hours to go by, which I think would make it very difficult, and I would get very frustrated and very impatient. But if you have a goal and you have something to do, it doesn't matter where you are or what they do to you. So you said to me, okay, based on the business that you want to achieve when you get out of prison, what books uh, do you think that you should read? And uh, I gave you a list of books, but you didn't think that those were such a great idea. Uh, and you steered me more uh, towards a different direction uh, in terms of my business and uh, inspirational women. 
and how they had turned their lives around and also about the beauty and wellness industry. So I want to, I want to be clear because I don't want to mislead you. I, it's not that I thought that the books that you chose were not, I didn't feel so great about. What I, what I wanted to convey, and I hope that we continue to convey, is that my thoughts are not important. What's important is your thoughts. But I didn't want you to try and follow the path that I took because we were two very different situations. Yes. I was in prison for 26 years. The reality is I think you're going to be home in about another four or five months. Mm -hmm. And you hope it's going, to be, it's going to happen because of the deliberate steps that you take. But the reality is, is that you have to set your own parameters for success. And you're right. We ask questions about what's the best possible outcome, not for tomorrow, but for two years from now or three years from now. And in three years from now, you are going to be an owner of a business. What's the name of that business? Slim and Trim. <laughs> slim and Trim. Erica's Slim and Trim products. And what will those Slim and Trim products do? They're going to make you slim. <laughs> They're going to make people who use your services, whether it's your, your beauty salons, your spas, your the products that you buy. Yes. Yeah. They're going to help you bring value to other people. And so since we know that's what we're trying to achieve in three years, we're going to try and say, okay, what can we do to make the best use of the time we have considering the resources and considering the complications. Mm -hmm. And because time is a very valuable resource, mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that you used it to the best of your ability. So the initial books that you suggested were books that I had read. Right. I had 26 years. You've got five months. I want you to read books that are going to get you there, that are going to help you feel strong, that are going to motivate you, that are going to inspire you. And so you've since then come up with some very effective tools. And you also watched a movie. What was that movie about? Uh, Joy. It was the, the movie about the, the lady that invented the miracle mob. And like I told you, I felt very identified with a character especially when uh, you see her as a little girl and the little girl is talking to her as an adult and she tells her, you know, you've been hiding so long from the world that you've even hidden from yourself. And I was like, wow, that's me. So she had forgot, she had lost a uh, touch of the part of her that was like the little girl who was enthusiastic and full of life and creative and optimistic and uh, she hid that deep inside of her, and she became someone that she wasn't meant to be. And um, I, I identified with a character, for sure. And, and you know what you're going to do by sharing this story right here, Erica, is you're helping other people who are living in struggle identify with your character, because we want them to see you right now where you are at the start of your journey. You might be in a pit right now and you have to build a ladder and start climbing your way up. And right now you are taking those first steps. But yeah. we know that if you continue building these steps, if you continue to read these books, we know that you are going to be much farther along toward launching your business when you come home. We know that you're going to be much farther along toward persuading the parole board why you're worthy of the earliest possible release. Mm -hmm. We know that we're going to be taking steps that can help your family feel better because they know that you are growing. Mm -hmm. And all of these steps, Erica, they all work together. And this is all part of the plan of building the new Erica, building the new slim and trim brand. And I want you to, to let your viewers know that it didn't start, it didn't, you didn't get become successful by accident. You started taking these very deliberate steps. You had a very solid plan when you went to prison. You executed that plan every single day that you were in prison. And your success became the, the deliberate outcome of the choices you made. That's what this is all about. And I'm so privileged to have had the opportunity to, to work with you and to help you come to this realization in your life. Now, every time you read a book, you told us that you're going to take further actions and share your, what you're doing with those books. Tell us what you're going to be doing. 
Well, I'm going to write the name of the book, the date I read it, why I picked that book, what I learned from that book, and how that book is going to uh, help me succeed when I get out of prison. And all of that is like building our house. We know that if we start with a plot of land, and we want to build a house, we might be able to see the window on the second floor, but before we can even get to that second floor, you have to have the plan laid out, and then you have to pour the foundation and put up the first floor walls, and then the second floor, and finally you get to the window, but it's all been these methodical steps, and that's what you are doing. You are building this methodical step that takes you far beyond the struggle that was derailing your happiness and your peace when we first spoke and giving you this confidence and that's just making you feel stronger and richer and more powerful and more vibrant right now, even though you're only a couple of weeks away from surrendering to prison. The difference is you know what you're going to be doing while you're in there and we're going to continue working on this process, working on this plan, and we're going to document this on the other side of this journey when you come out of prison, the new slim and trim Erica, ready to begin building your business, and every day is going to have meaning. That's what I'm hoping that we can do. Will you do that with me? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> well, I, I want to thank you so much. Do you have anything to say to your future viewers who are going to be seeing this when you're already very successful? What are you... Tell them how your journey has been going and tell them a little bit about what they should be doing, what you'd like to see them doing today so that they can become as successful as you're becoming. Well, something that I wanted to add is that, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to uh, write, you know, work with you at the beginning and write the biography and I didn't want to be on the show 24 to Life. I didn't even really want to do this interview today, but every time that, you know, I see that the old me talking to, to Erica and saying, oh, don't do this, I have like another little voice telling me, no, you have to do it. You have to take a risk. You have to come out of your shell. You have to make an effort. Just like, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you don't want to go for a jog, for example, and you still, you can overcome that. So it's kind of about overcoming our nature or... Uh, our, uh, the way we lean in life and uh, not taking the easy way out but accepting the challenge every day with every little decision you make and then after I do it I'm like oh that wasn't that hard I feel really good so I'm very excited about this new journey I'm, I know it sounds weird I'm excited for you and I hope that those who are watching our program will Watch Erica. If you want to reach out and write to her while she's in prison and encourage her, I will be putting her contact information, um, supplementing this, this information uh, as we get that information of what her registration number is and where her location is. And you can feel free to write her directly. But more importantly, we urge you to tune back in on the other side of this journey when Erica is returning to society and you will see as she speaks with us again and tells us about how she was able to keep her level of energy high even while going through struggle, how she was able to focus always on the success that she was going to become and not on spinning out of control and not as living as a shell and hiding inside of that shell, but instead blossoming and coming out. That's what success is all about. That's why I think she feels more energetic today. And that's why she is going to be the success that, that all of us want to become. So I'm so grateful to you, Erica, for sharing your story with us. And I look forward to having the second episode when you come home. Is that okay? Yes. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for helping me and for everything that you do. Thank you for being part of the Earning Freedom program. I look forward to the success that you're going to tell our viewers about in a couple of months when you come back home. That's all for today's Earning Freedom program, and we look forward to sharing more inspiring stories with you soon. Thank you.